Greeting to all of you, my friends on YouTube. Today, I would like to speak to you about things that it has been developing in the news. Uh, few things, some of it on the in, in the Middle East region, but also some concerning North Korea. And somehow they are actually connected. Uh, we read on the news that um, President Trump and uh, the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, are both talking to uh, arrange to meet together to talk about uh, ending the threat, the nuclear threat. And we know that it was like uh, pulling back and forth and finally it was declared that President Trump and Kim Jong-un are going to meet next month, the month of June. And then suddenly uh, President Trump kind of like pulled back. And the reason is, I've been to Korea many times. The, the Korean people, whether it's North or South, they have certain characteristics that the, it's like they, they have the macho mentality in a way. So it's like, I have to be on top. I have to show to my people, the North Korean people and to the world that I am the one who is dictating the rules and uh, I guess President Trump is not aware of that he's not Korean obviously uh, so once there was an agreement to meet the North Korean propaganda started to Kind of like uh, <coughs> work its uh, work its way to build up the the leader of North Korea that he is telling Trump what to do and uh, he's the boss he's the one on top. I don't know exactly what happened in North Korea that uh, made President Trump pull back and say it looks like if you are going to be playing this game to tell us what to do then there is no need to talk but suddenly we read again that Kim Jong-un comes the North Korean leader comes and says oh no no we want to meet and everything and suddenly he started to destroy all the nuclear sites. Demolish it, get rid of it completely. Which to me it's a gesture. Of course he will be telling his people we now know how to produce all kind of nuclear uh, bombs but uh, you know these things we don't need it anymore. So we accomplished our objective and therefore we have to get rid of it. But this is a gesture to President Trump and to the West, you see. Don't worry about what I say, but I am getting rid of it and let's meet so we can do something. It means he's submitting, he's submitting, which is good. Why am, why am I bringing North Korea into the picture? The reason is that was North Korea, Iran, are really the hope for many Muslims to hang on to. Muslim countries are in terrible situation. So when they see a country like North Korea or Iran, they start to uh, advance and develop and try to... Uh, go forward then they hang on to that as a dream 
to return to the Muslim Caliphate. And the way I say that in Arabic is actually rather funny because by changing only one letter, it becomes like uh, instead of Caliphate, changing the L letter in the middle to R. So instead of Caliphate, it becomes Carifet. Or, or in Arabic, Al Khilafa, that's the Caliphate. And in Arabic, the other word would be Al Khurafa, which means the nonsense, the Islamic nonsense that they are dreaming of. <coughs> so the Islamic nonsense that they are dreaming of will never happen, especially after North Korea, the spearhead that they were depending on got broken. There's no more hope because they know very, very well the second spearhead was Iran. And Iran knows that its end the end is near. The end is near for Iran. Once President Trump came into the office, he took office, he is not playing the games that other president, Republican as well as Democrats alike. They were weak. I'm not saying Trump is a perfect man or no, but he's a businessman and he knows how to deal with different personalities. Uh, he's not a young kid. He is, I think he's 72 years old now. So he saw all kinds of personalities and he dealt with all kinds of people in his business throughout this time. So he knows how to, in a way, read people and how to deal with them whereas especially the last president obama he was almost unclear and that what brought us into a situation now that is so sticky that is very hard to come out uh, uh, come out of now until late 80s early 90s before the collapse of the Soviet Union, Muslim countries, Muslim countries, even though they profess to believe in God, they used to hide behind the Soviet Union, the atheist, godless system. Okay? Now, the Soviet Union collapsed. They are looking for a leader. So the hope, they don't respect so much Iran because it's Shiite and majority of Muslims are Sunni. They don't respect or trust Iran that much, but they will trust the atheist country such as North Korea. And the, the way North Korea had reached that point to because it's a very, very poor country. The, the people are starving there. The way they started to uh, produce nuclear weapons and they have uh, nuclear technology, it was the because of the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 90s. So the Soviet Union collapsed. All the scientists that they were working in, uh, in the nuclear programs in the Soviet Union all of a sudden, they became jobless. They have nothing to do. So they sold themselves to many different countries. If we remember that uh, president of Libya, Gaddafi, he started to build a nuclear reactor. Syria was building one. Iraq was working on one. Uh, 
Iran is working on few sites there in Iran, not only one. Uh, who else? Uh, So many countries are actually uh, developing nuclear bomb and the reason was because uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union and these scientists came from former Soviet Union selling themselves to Iran, Libya, uh, North Korea, Pakistan, India. So suddenly you start to see these countries having nuclear bombs. They have the technology and Pakistan developed the bomb, India developed the bomb. So there was a hope for many Muslims to hang on to, to have that Islamic dream, the Muslim caliphate, or the Muslim nonsense or other. But with the, now we, we see that Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, gave it up, destroyed the site, no more, and he's going to meet with Trump knowing well that this man is not like Obama, is not like George Bush or Clinton. He knows this man means business. And it's either you get rid of it yourself or we will destroy it for you and kill you with it. So I think some, because he is like a young boy, actually. He reminds me of President Gaddafi. He used to kind of like go on the stage and he wants attention and he would be talking nonsense and people would clap for him. And this guy of North Korea is very similar. He will shoot a couple of rockets into the sky. One falls near Japan, one falls near Guam and he just uh, wants to show, you see, we're leaders too, I'm um, here the boss, I'm the boss of the whole world. But I believe Trump put him in the right place and things will take different direction in North Korea. I hope, I hope that this meeting will bring positive result because should the war break between North and South Korea, if you know the geography of Seoul, the capital of South Korea, the, the casualty will be in the millions in the first few hours, in the millions. The living will envy the dead. It will be total destruction. So I'm not hoping for that. I don't want to see people suffer. That's one. Two, the quicker this regime end, the quicker the Muslim totally lose hope completely in that nonsense of uh, Islamic Caliphate. There are signals that I see, for example, uh, after Trump put uh, embargo, uh, economic embargo on uh, Iran, the currency of Iran and the economy of Iran is collapsing. And that normally when the economy collapses in a country, and let's say your, your saving is $1 million in the bank, and with one million dollar, you say, let's say, you can buy, you can buy a, a good house, okay, or a good sized piece of land. And then you wake up the next day, that million dollars will not buy you even uh, a used car. 
So when this happened, people uh, rebel. They are not happy. They are dissatisfied. And this is what's happening to the economy of Iran as well as well as well as Turkey. The Turkish lira is collapsing. When something like that happens, people rebel and they become dissatisfied. So what you see now in Iran because of that dissatisfaction, many women publicly take that hijab, that head cover off in public in defiance to the system and to the religion. Okay, and you see also the, the same thing happening in Turkey. Uh, Turkey, after uh, Erdogan took over, little by little it became uh, a fundamentalist Muslim country. And for people who think they don't like that very much, and they start to rebel and act against that. So, originally the dream was, after World War I, when the Ottoman Empire was defeated, the Muslim countries became very depressed very poor, depressed, and almost like uh, forgotten. They started to be revived when the demand on oil took place right before World War II. This when they started to sell oil and have return, have money. Other than that, all this Gulf region, they were beggars. Okay, they were beggars. So now the Gulf region had the money. Iran almost have the nuclear technology. Turkey has a very strong army, and I believe they were trying to get Egypt to to be involved in the same uh, scheme. So so that they can obtain the Muslim Caliphate. You have the weapons, the nuclear weapon. You have uh, the money to supply the war. In the Gulf region, they have money like dirt. And you have the army. What is stopping you from bringing about the Muslim Caliphate. That was the Muslim mind. The future is ours. Let's apply Sharia law to the whole world. But with the, the breaking of the thorn of North Korea, this is an indication that Iran is next and Turkey will collapse. So, this is a good signal in many way, in many ways, that, by the way, I forgot to mention, now, because Turkey was almost becoming like totalitarian Muslim country even though it's supposed to be a modern country, they started to have this hijab, almost forcing it on women. So, but because of that dissatisfaction in Iran and in Turkey, in Iran, we, we have seen already these women who stand up in defiance to Islam and to the system, and they take this hijab off in public and they, they throw it away. 
in Turkey, it was illegal to say that uh, you're an upstate. It is illegal to, you, you could actually lose your life if you are of a Muslim family and you say, I don't believe in Islam. You could get killed for that. However, these days, publicly, many Muslim men and women are standing up and saying, I don't believe in this nonsense. Muhammad was not a prophet. So some of them, they become agnostic. Some become atheist. Uh, I really don't, don't know the exact statistic in Turkey, but many people now have the courage to stand up and to say, I will no longer have to accept that pressure that I have to uh, be following, pretending that I believe in this. So in Turkey and Iran, they are doing the same thing. Not only that, in Saudi Arabia, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In Saudi Arabia itself, I spoke about that before, that the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, he is really looking to bring about change. But the change, I felt it's happening too fast almost in Saudi Arabia. And when it happens so fast, it can actually bring chaos. Uh, if we remember 1989, when uh, that incident of Tiananmen Square in China, when the youth, the, the students, tried to change the socialist communist system to freedom and they carried the Statue of Liberty and they wanted to change the, the, the country into democratic free nation, the tanks went down and they actually killed many students at this time. And when I read about that that time, I actually thought even though many people were killed, but I thought that might have been a little better than if a country with over one billion people go into chaos, because you will have the Chinese mafia, you will have uh, anarchy, uh, people will go out of control, and you're not talking about 10, 20 people, or even a million, you're talking about over a billion people running out of control, everyone for himself. It would be a lawless state. So in a way, it was better to sacrifice a few hundred students than probably half of the population will disappear and evolve slowly from that evil ideology of socialist communist system. And when I compare that to what's happening in Saudi Arabia, I felt even though the crown prince was going a little bit too fast. And what happened is some people actually took advantage of that, especially there were seven women, and they pushed way beyond to a point that he had to arrest them and put them in jail. So when it goes too fast, it is very dangerous. I don't. I hope he doesn't keep them too long in jail. I hope that this will change. We have to be really. Uh, I, I can't tell them what to do, but we have to really be careful and read the signs. And it's not just uh, let, let's make it collapse quickly because if it collapses quickly, the whole country will suffer and will suffer a lot. So. The in, in the conclusion here, I would like to draw the line that what's happening in a way is good. It is very good that uh, finally the president, the leader of North Korea agreed to meet with President Trump again. 
and it seems to be going forward and uh, the hope the hope for those Muslim fundamentalists of re-establishing the Islamic Caliphate is dissipating faster than they expected. Thank you very much and we see you once again in another video.